Hey everyone and welcome back to AK Expenses Tracker. In the previous video I published about the architecture of the application I got a very good question from uh, Daniel Lee. Said, based on your experience, can you give an idea about how much does this architecture cost per month? So that, that, that's actually a very, very important question and I got it also too many times when I've said like I want to build an Azure uh, course and I got many questions especially by email say that let's focus into normal development because Azure is not for everyone especially when it comes to um, single developers or individuals let's say or open source contributors or stuff like that because Azure is expensive and it's yeah somehow it's it's not suitable so basically the point is I'm going to specify a special video about that that's for this course and for other courses that you are that I'm going to cover some point that you can keep in mind whenever you you have any idea that you want to develop it. So I want to talk about the cost of this project for development and for production plus the a cloud vs traditional development overall. I'm just gonna cover some point that's very important for you so please Keep those in mind whenever you develop and let me know in the comments below if you don't agree or if you have some other point that you actually want to share. So basically, if we take a look at the beginning at the cloud vs traditional development and the cost, I'm going to cover the cost of the current project at the end, but let's start by talking about the traditional development. Why in 2022 it's not that common and why it's decreasing comparing to the cloud development and why like Azure and AWS or uh, Google Cloud is actually rising so fast. First of all, normal development is very time consuming. Why? Because you are developing everything by yourself. If you are, for example, a very simple example, if you want to develop a background service, you go, you need to go ahead and write all the infrastructure code required and setting up the services and dependencies and stuff like that. And you need to keep in mind how this is going to affect the overflow of your application. So this is going to take your time. Comparing if you are using an Azure, you can directly use what's called Azure Service Pass, Azure Queue Storage, or maybe some events like event services like Event Grid or like I'm talking from a Azure perspective, I'm not, I don't have any experience in AWS, but overall, it's always time consuming. You have to write things for yourself, by yourself. In addition to that, it's related to the previous point, it's very complicated. Let me give you another example. If, you, if your application stores um, attachments or if it's storing like documents or images or stuff like that, you need to store those in folders. What if you want to secure those and you need to manage the access for them, not straightforward by hitting the URL? You need to write your own middleware to make this secure, right? And you need to test it and you need to make sure that there is no bugs here and there that allow some users to access these files, especially if you are developing for business where those files are very crucial. Or not only for business, actually, even if you are developing an app for consumers and those like there is an images for, for people and only the logged in person can see them, you need to make sure that this access is very restricted and it's powerful. Other than that, you'll be in trouble, right? And you have to write this code by yourself. Maybe you can find some libraries, but at the end of the day, like Azure already managing that for you using the Azure Blob storage and it's free. So there is the SaaS token, shared access signature, where you can secure your documents very efficiently and easy. So other than that, you have software and hardware maintenance, right? You finished your application, which is an ASP.NET Core Web API, and you want to host that. Where you are going to host it? You have two options. Either you bring your own hardware. It's, it's not likely to happen for you as an individual, but if you have, it's, it's a bank, for example, or stuff like that, they are going to do that. They are going to pay a lot, a lot of money. And if you are an individual and you rented, for example, a remote server, like a VPS virtual, uh, uh, what, what the... The acronym for this, I actually forget, virtual private server. And uh, uh, yeah, it's running, for example, Windows 10 or Windows Server. You are responsible for the maintainability of this, right? You need to upgrade it in case you need to manage the IIS by yourself, all this stuff. You are responsible to do that. This is very consuming and it's costly as well. Um, the other idea, you have a lot of licenses you have to pay. Like if you have a SQL server and you don't want to go with a, like uh, in the official way you need to buy a license and that license is very expensive much more than what you think so 
another reason and that that's actually very clear why it's it's another reason why to not go with the traditional development the last thing I want to talk about is the scaling. Like if you have an application and you're running 500 users right now and that's good and then suddenly your application becomes 2000. I'm not going to say 1 million, just 2000. What's going to happen? How, what you're going to do basically? Increasing the scale, you need maybe additional license for a scale server. Maybe you need to increase the RAM, you need to increase the, 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 the SSD or the storage, the hard drive, the hard disk. What you're going to do? This is all costs us a lot. You can. You can just think about that, about a full app that's running on production. I'm not just talking about creating a new project in Visual Studio and just look at what, what I'm going to do. Basically, this is all free and it's not costly. But when it comes to publishing, when you have a real project, it's very costly if you compare it to the cloud. And uh, when you scale, it's very limited. Let's forget about the cost. It's very limited. Like, how many RAMs are you going to put at the end of the day? Like, you are very limited. What, what about the hard disk? You are going to bring one terabyte, two terabyte, but okay. And then you need more and more and you need more machines and stuff like that, which is something very hard. Um, yeah, we have one more point. It's not very secure. Why? Because, uh, for example, you build your own identity server by yourself. You build uh, the authentication mechanism by yourself. And what about the provider that giving you this VPS? Not all of them are trusted. Maybe some of them are just small companies that don't follow the best practices and stuff like that. So there is always a vulnerability, basically. And uh, what if this company basically shuts down? Does it have like a replications around the world and many uh, servers that your data are safe? You have to manage that by yourself, basically. But if we compare that to cloud, which is many of people actually think that it's very expensive because when you open Azure, it directly asks you for a credit card and stuff like that. And you always see that it's asking you a lot. That's right. For the first impression, that's 100% right. It looks more costly, but in reality, it's not because it's very easy and quick. Like what you can develop in one month using traditional, you can get it done in, in like five days if you are developing the cloud because there is a tons of powerful managed services and SDKs are ready for you. If you want to store files normally on your machine, comparing to storing the files using the blob storage and the Azure blob SDK, this one will actually takes you a minute, which is very secure, very powerful, and it's free. So uh, it's, it's, as I've said, easy, quick, and you have a lot of services like you want to implement, um, as I have said yesterday in the architecture, a queue where actually you put messages and then an Azure functions will run to send this message, this email to, to, to the specific recipient. So basically in this case, if you want to build that for yourself, just think about it, come up with a solution and think about how many lines of code you need to write and how many tests you need to, oh, sorry. I don't, okay, here we go. So other than that, infinity scale with a single click, right? If you are going, we are going to use Azure functions and Actually, over here, you don't need to, to hit that click. If there is 1,000 users, those functions are going to work perfectly without our, uh, without like a human intervention in, in the middle. But if there is a 10 million users after like a few hours, I'm not saying 1,000 million, it's okay. They are going to scale automatically and they are going to handle that load for us. And it's very secure because uh, when you are using the cloud, they are all internationally certified and when you are putting your application there is millions of other big organizations are using the same service so for that reason they are well certified well secure they are all following the best practices and the security standards their servers are amazing they are existing all over the world you can replicate your data so it's safe even like if a disaster happens someplace you can you can basically replicate the data on another region or another zone or server or stuff like that and you can still have access for your data so for your app, it feels like nothing happens if it, it could be a big disaster, So, but it's it's fully okay. Very secure because when you are using, for example, Azure Active Directory, you're using the OAuth uh, server or OpenID Connect, and it's very easy to implement, just a few minutes to get it done, and it follows all the standards required by the industry to, be, to say that this website is actually secure. The most important thing is it's pay as you go and no license is required. We are going to use Cosmos DB. We are not going actually to pay $2,000 a month to buy a license and to be officially registered, right? We are going to use uh, the pay as you go model when, when we have like 100 users, we are going to pay, for example, a month like $30. If there is like 
10 million users we are going to pay a month like five thousand dollars as an example and it's okay the more you scale you pay just a fraction comparing to pay the license which is very cheap and on top of that uh, we will talk about the free stuff later on and um, overall overall it's very very cheap if you compare it to but if and only if if you manage the tool if you create an app service to host your app which is basically like a simple open source library that you have your application but you choose in the wrong plan for your app service and you for example you set the always on to, to true and your app is always running you're going to pay a lot but if you manage it well and you choose the right plan you choose the right like uh, scaling alerts and stuff like that it's going to be very cheap and sometimes it's free you don't pay anything i have many services that's right now running on azure and they are free and this is we are talking right now about the next point is the cost of this application while we are developing and while it's on production and i have said that this app is real i'm going to be the first user for it so what is the cost of this app while we are developing so the reality is 0 0.00 nothing and as you can see this advertisement from the 80s no other subscription required if you are developing on windows if you have a windows machine and you are following this course on windows you don't have an Azure subscription, it's okay. You can you can get it when you want to, to, to deploy to production. But if you just want to learn, you can learn and you don't need to pay anything or you don't even to create a Microsoft account to create an Azure subscription. You're going to see that that's amazing, right? And right now, let's talk about the production cost. The production cost, it depends if you have 1 million users. Of course, you have 1 million users who are making a lot of revenues, <laughs> even if even if there is no paid plans, like there is a advertisement. So. So it's okay for, for the cost. Uh, for the beginning, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm the first user. Maybe you are going to install the app, but it's an open source. You can host it yourself on your account. But for me, I can keep using this app for years and years to come. And the cost actually going to be 0, 0.00 because Azure Functions gives you 1 million call a month for free. 1 million call. Imagine like that's a lot. Even for each 1 million call, they cost a fraction of dollars like it's nothing if you compare it with any other server when it comes to blob storage blob storage for small apps or even medium apps it's almost free as well because i'm not sure maybe the the gigabyte costs like a cent or two cents so imagine like it's it's exactly nothing a q storage is the same the only thing that's expensive is the azure cosmos db and we have to be very careful with our queries with how we store the data, with how we do all the stuff. But the great thing is that Azure Cosmos DB gives you $25 or $27 a month for free in a free Azure account. That's amazing, right? So the cost actually going to be on the production 0, 0.00 as well. So this is the cost of development and this is the cost of production. And um, yeah, keep in mind, if you are on Windows, you don't even need an Azure account at the beginning until like we reach a moment where we want to deploy stuff to make it available. So I hope like this clarifies some stuff for you and clarify the question like why people are going to the cloud. It's not actually there just to take money. It's actually there to empower. And it's a cycle where every part of it is, is, is like is gaining and the developer is gaining. Microsoft is gaining or Amazon and the full industry is gaining and the users at the end of the day is happy because they can be using the app without disruption. It's very secure. They feel that their files and storage is secured using like the high standards of the industry. So you don't care about those applications are or those data is existing like on a server for a small startup that no one knows about and no one knows if it's actually secure or no. And if those data is going to stay safe for a long time. So this is everything I would like to share before we get started with the project. And I hope that this session clarifies uh, those points for you and um, yeah the next one we are going to set up our development environment without an Azure subscription um, on 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 Windows but if you are on Mac you need an Azure subscription to follow with with the storage and the Cosmos DB but it's okay you can keep going for free so thank you so much everyone for watching and see you in the next one